How to create a customizable countdown timer using Playmaker. First, get rid of this god-awful background. I prefer something easy on the eyes, like a soft, unsaturated purple. That's also very chic. Now, let's create a UI with text. The text doesn't freaking matter. And now we will pull it up and not change it to something non-blurry and pretty. But we will make it 24, so it's even more blurry and illegible. That is good. Now we need a counting system. We'll create an empty object. We'll name it Counting Manager because we're official with our bright chick purple background. And now we need something to remind us of our success. Is working. We'll change the color to green and give it a graphic. I'm going to use the knob. I'm feeling frisky. The size should be whatever you want it to be, and out of the way. That'll do. Now disable it. This did not actually change. I am sorry. The manager of counting. Alright, now for the fun stuff. Add an FSM. This is going to be a waiter. I'm going to give you a huge tip with Playmaker right now, so listen up. If you cannot get your actions to fire, they probably don't have something to go into. And you can fix that by adding a wait. So right at the end, if you change this to like 0.01 and give it a finish event, it will go into whatever event you set. Like if you just put transition finished and you can't figure out why it's not going into another event, that will fix your problem. In our case, we want to wait one second and our finish event will be countdown. You can change this time to three seconds, whatever you want. It can be useful for making an in-game clock that doesn't use real time. So, here we want it to count down. Connect those. And for our countdown, we're going to need two variables. You're just going to have to trust me when I say this is an integer because you probably can't see it over my ridiculous placement of our recording tools that were cheap. Our first variable will be our starting number, and I'm going to change its value to 5 and make sure it's not a float but a whole number, an integer. And the next one will be our target number. Again, make sure it is an integer. Double checking, this one is 0. This one should be 5. Okay, we're set. So. For counting down, type in int, and you want int add. I know that doesn't seem to make sense, but bear with me. There is no int subtract. We're going to take our starting number, and we're going to add negative 1. And now it's not going to do anything. If we press play, it will subtract 1. This will become 4. That's it. So we need an int compare. So we're going to take our starting number, and we're going to compare it with our target number. If it's equal, the countdown is finished. And here we'll add another state, countdown complete, and connect them. If it's not finished, we want a new event, continue counting. If it's greater than, also continue counting. That'll loop it back here. On countdown complete, we're going to activate our game object, which is is working. Now when we press play, we'll see if I'm a liar. You can check if it's working by hitting variables and watching the starting number countdown. Ta-da! It's working. Just as a bonus round, let's connect this to the UI really, really quick. First, we're going to need to change our integer to a string. The integer will not show up here if you try to enter it. It's not the right data format or data type, however you prefer that one. So convert, we're going to take our int to a string. 
the int variable is going to be our starting number, and our string variable will have to create one. And I'm going to call it int to string. To actually display it on our interface, we need to get the property of the interface. So go to text. This is an easier way to do it, just bear with me. We're going to set property. And the reason we put it on the text, even though we're going to use it in our accounting manager, is because it's easier to just drag this right down here. Ta-da! And the property we want is text string. Just copy this. Go to accounting manager and paste. Paste after. And the value we want to change to our int to string. And now when I press play, it's not going to change right away. It's going to be stuck like this. But it is working. This has to be moved up to before int compare because it's doing things in the order that you tell it to. Two, one, bam, ta-da!